Hi, it's Rick. Today I'm going to be decorating my spoon handles. I'm going to be using a traditional Swedish method called kolrosing. And they say that this method goes all the way back to the Vikings. And basically what it is, is a method that allows you to tattoo the wood. Now if you've never done this before, don't feel bad, neither have I. So let's check it out together. So here are some spoons that I've made. And I'm going to use these two today to try coal roasting on. And the first thing I'm going to do is to pencil in the design that I want to have very lightly. And I have drawn out some simple designs on a piece of scrap paper just so I'm not just completely making this up as I go along. I do have a specific design in mind. They're going to be very simple because this is my first time and I think I'll put the first one on this one. I don't want to go too dark because I want it to come off. But last one was a lot of mostly straight lines and I want this one to be um, more curvy just so I can try it out. I'll try something like this. So we'll try the geometric design first. I'll use my coal roasting knife that I made in the last video. Mark it out. Is the more or less straight design. Now I'll try the curved one. So now I need to rub something into the cuts that I just made to make them darker. And I'm told that the coal in coal roasting um, is because in the old days they used coal dust. I don't think anybody nowadays wants coal dust on their eating utensils, so we use more organic things. And on this spoon, I'm going to try and use some coffee grounds. These are coffee grounds that I put on a cookie sheet on the wood stove and dried out after they were used. And then I crushed them so they'd be a little finer powder. And I'm just going to try rubbing that into the cuts I just made. that I'm going to rub it down with a little bit of oil. This is grapeseed oil. The oil seals in the coffee into the cuts. So here is the first one. And it's not great, but 
it's my first time it's not all that bad for the second spoon I'm going to try using something else I'm going to use a little bit of cocoa and you can use different things in these um, I've heard of people using paprika to give it a red tinge or cinnamon is more brown and this is um, cocoa baking cocoa I'm gonna try that this is much finer it seems to be working better I think That seems to have filled it in better than the coffee did because it was more powdery, finer. Again, I'll rub that down with a little bit of oil. To seal everything in. There's that one. So they say that once the oil dries and seals that in, it'll never come out. It'll always be there. Now out of the two substances that I used, the coffee and the cocoa, I like the cocoa better. And I think that's because it was a finer powder and it filled the cuts more easily, more readily. And as I said, you can experiment with different substances, but um, I like this method. This, is, this was my first time, but you can do very intricate designs with it. Some people do very intricate designs. I also would like to say that I think having the coal roasting knife made it easier. Um, you, I'm sure you could do this with a regular knife or an X-Acto knife, but I think that um, it was easier because I had this knife. So here it is. I'm happy with the results. I'm going to try some more intricate designs and you don't have to use this just on spoons you can use this on any wood project to design to uh, put designs on any wood project so that I like you like. I like the way that these turned out and I'll be trying some more intricate patterns in the future. Now as I said the cocoa seemed to work better than the coffee and I think that was because the cocoa was a finer powder and it got into the cuts more easily. It's an interesting and fun way to decorate your spoon handles and anything else wood that you might want to decorate with some line art. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, and as always, thank you for watching.